Okay, this is how to set up a Sierra Interactive website um, into SEM Rush, including setting up Google Analytics and Google Search Console. And so you can see I have a bunch of tabs open. I have logged into SEM Rush. I have logged into the Google account. Um, here is the beginning of the Analytics account. Here is the beginning of the Search Console account. And here is the back end of uh, Sierra Interactive website. So um, there are just a couple of things that you should know and get to. Um, you kind of want to add all of these things together. If you don't have SEM Rush and you don't want to subscribe to that that's fine but you can follow the steps to set up Google Analytics and Search Console in a Sierra Interactive website as well so in Sierra Interactive click on the gear and then go to global site settings and then I went to the wrong spot uh, <laughs> it is oh, they change it for pro sites and other sites so bear with me I will click around just a little bit yeah okay so it's in site layout settings and then tracking and conversions okay so <clears throat> it looks like that uh, pixel um, from Facebook has already been added um, it's it's added here a little too much um, you you only need to add it in one specific area and you will learn uh, just like in the Facebook ID pixel tracking that if it's up here then they already added all of this extra code and then code that they're really just after is just this little section. So technically um, all of this Facebook pixel stuff can be removed because it's again, it's already added and it's just that's what's needed. So um, I'm going to hit control A and then control C um, on the other screen that you can't see. I'm going to type in notepad and paste it in there um, just in case um, I'm completely wrong. But um, it's worked with analytics, so I don't think I am. So I'm gonna actually delete all of this stuff. Again, it doesn't need to be there and it doesn't need to be in three separate places. Um, when you do uh, uh, Google uh, tracking pixel ID, it, they say it's just in the head or in the body, not in all three places. Um, what you're doing is you're adding the code. So then it slows the site down because you're adding it three separate times. So let's go to Google analytics since it's at the top. Um, so in analytics, uh, just make sure you're logged into whatever Google account you want to have admin rights to this account um, or ownership of the account. So then um, so then just all, all you have to do at this moment is just continue to fill out all of the forms and leave everything checked, then hit next. Um, what well, this is a website it's not an app or a web app on a web it's just a website um, and I, you could you can kind of type in whatever you want um, I tend to uh, just <clears throat> use the domain um, it's easier for me we have a bunch of clients so um, if it's just the one account you can label this whatever you want um, Um, and then the same time, just copy and paste the URL. I always copy and paste it just to make sure that it's working right. Delete the HTTPS and then change this to HTTPS. Um, category, this is a real estate site. Again, I'm all about cheating, type in real. Um, and then pick your time zone. I don't know where. I'm just going to pick Toronto and I, I'm going to be wrong. <laughs> so I'm going to create, and again, you could change that at any point in time. Um, you accept the information, accept the information uh, down here again, and then hit accept. Now uh, analytics is going to send you to the tracking code. I'm not going to use the app. Uh, you can and the only thing that you're grabbing is this so like in Facebook pixel it has all of this code um, but you don't need to grab it so you could just highlight the tracking ID up top it's easier than grabbing it down here um, go to Sierra interactive and then just paste the code in there so the same exact thing again if you remember we had all of that code um, 
all of this additional code for the Facebook pixel and all three areas, we have removed that and then just put the pixel ID and, and go from there and now hit save. Um, we can verify that the code is working by going back to analytics, um, refreshing the page, and then you will receive a button tracking item and then and then the website will show up so it's not going to show any data right now because it's just done it um, you could continue we'll come back to this and refresh the page again and again uh, just to make sure that uh, the tracking is working but it'll show a button you click on the button the website shows up and then we'll go from there so I will return back to this if I remember all right so the next thing is Google Analytics um, you could do this in multiple ways with Google Analytics. You can verify the entire domain. Um, this, however, requires you to log into your registrar or the website host and purchase that. And usually when you're using uh, a software like Sierra Interactive, they don't allow you to do any of that information unless you pointed your A record to it, but that gets a little more complicated. So all I'm gonna do is just highlight and copy the URL again and then paste it into the URL prefix code and then hit continue. Again, this is going to work with verification and there are a couple of ways to verify. Verify through HTML file. Well, you can't upload it, so that's not going to work. You can verify through Google Analytics, which we've just done, but we've just done it. So Google Analytics technically isn't verified. You could do it through the DNS record or you could do an HTML tag. And so we're just going to click on HTML tag and hit copy and go back to CR Interactive and in the head, hit paste. Now this is the verification code and then hit save. Uh, part of the issues that I have um, is that I want to go right here and hit verify because that's the button I see. However, that's going to verify the HTML file. So that's not going to work. You need under the HTML tag, hit verify. And then it will go to the website, look for that tag and then ownership is verified. Then you hit go to property. It gives you a little tutorial. Just say I got it and kind of click through. The first thing um, that I tend to want to do, actually, I want to do a couple of things. Uh, the first thing, uh, the second thing, uh, a thing is click on sitemaps and then add the sitemap, which the sitemap is already listed there. And I always tend to want to verify that that's the correct sitemap. La da, that's the correct sitemap. And we'll go back to sitemaps over here, which is Google Search Console, and it's slash sitemap. So this is the sitemap that Google already found on the site. The only reason why you couldn't see this information is because you didn't verify that you own the website. Now that you have, you can see this information. The very next item that I do is I start adding people in that need access to the site. So you go to settings and then go to users and permissions. You can see the very first thing is that analytics is already verified as an owner because they automatically do that when you add them and then Lee himself is an owner. So what I want to do is add a user and I'll add Tim at personalseo.com and then hit add. Uh, this allows me now to have full access over the website. I can add or create users. This helps me as Lee as a customer and training you guys on how to do SEO. This helps uh, if I can actually get in here and look at some of the information. And I will also need that same information in SEM Rush. In SEM Rush, the thing that you hear is you now switching to SEM Rush, um, click on add new project. So usually, um, again, I'm, I'm always about copying and pasting just because I want to make sure that I'm not just assuming he's not using the WW or the HTTPS, that it's actually all there. Um, and then I'm just going to type in his name. Again, you can enable it, whatever you want. It really doesn't matter. This is in this account. This is going to be the only account. So I'm going to hit create project. And then this is where SEM rush starts to actually work. Um, so what we need to do is click on the project and then you will now see a bunch of boxes that we have to start attaching everything to. One of the first things that I like to do is I like to do a backlink audit. This tells me that there are any toxic backlinks on the website and it starts connecting the website to analytics and Google search console. So you simply just click setup. <clears throat> you choose the root domain 
I tend to choose this one, the WW and the non-WW version, depending on how many links are in either, but usually these are fairly close, and then hit Start Audit Backlink. As it's detecting all of the backlinks, it wants to connect to Google Search Console, and since we are already logged in, we can just click Connect Search Console. We then click Add Google Account. It automatically sees my Google accounts. I click on the one that's already logged in, scroll down, and click Allow. The next item that needs to be done is that we need to add the backlink audit software to Google Search Console. So under Users and Permissions, we go to Add User, hit Paste, and this is just a bot, so we allow it full permissions, it's fine, and then hit Add. Now the bot is fully added to Google Search Console, therefore you will get better backlink reporting across the board. It's going to run you through a little tutorial and then go from there. So now that that's done, um, just click Check Backlinks and Upload Backlinks. Now it's going to connect to Google Search Console and audit the entire back, backlink section. Continue in the background and then go to Results. This will automatically be done um, regular, regularly um, on its own schedule, and you can adjust the schedule after it gets done crawling the links. So usually about once a month is when I tend to run backlink auditing, and that's it. If there is a toxic backlink, we'll go over that later. Since there isn't one, it's just about connecting the services together. Um, now if we go back to the Lee Yusuf project, let's use the cheat sheet it's really easy to use it that way um, the first thing that we're going to talk about today is site audit what we're going to do is we're going to crawl a 5,000 pages okay so I have a different account so we're going to be stuck at adding more than 100, 100 pages for paid SEMS users okay so we're going to do 100 pages and we're going to do a website so then we're just going to hit crawler settings um, we're going to crawl one URL per two seconds, which helps with server load. We're going to send an email when it's complete and allow to disallow URLs. This is important. This next step is important to add these next fields specifically for Sierra websites. Um, and the reason being is that Sierra websites show listings as content. So what I normally do is I click on a listing and then I grab property dash search up here and then add it to SEM rush. What I am telling SEM rush to do is ignore every single page after slash dash property search. And the reason for that is because then I don't have to crawl all of the listings on the website. Um, it makes it a lot easier to, to crawl the site. You're never going to crawl it. Um, because it's always going to change and there are too many listings. So avoiding the listings is actually the best way to do that. Uh, the other thing that I like to do is click on search. <clears throat> and again, make sure that property search is, is there. If it had a map search or a different kind of search, I would add those URLs just because I don't want to crawl them at all or include them into the site audit because if there's something SEO wrong on this page right here that you can't fix it. Um, it's just the um, the issue with Sierra, most uh, real geeks, all of them have this issue. You just can't fix anything on this page, so there's no point in putting them in the audit. So now that the property search is done, um, you're not going to use uh, URL restrictions. You're not going to bypass uh, anything that they don't allow. Um, you can schedule it uh, weekly every Monday and then hit start site audit. So this is going to scan. Uh, the first 100 pages, and then uh, um, what we'll do is we'll talk to Lee specifically and say, hey, unfortunately, you're going to have to upgrade to the next highest account or um, purchase something else that allows you to crawl more pages. Um, and that, that will be the entire site audit. So that's running. So we have connected Google Analytics to the website uh, by adding the code up here. We have connected Google Search Console to the website by adding this code in here, and we fixed uh, the Facebook pic tracking pixel 
um, by removing it out of these three areas and just adding the code up there. Again, I'm off on the other screen. I'm just making sure I'm highlighting the Facebook code. I'm going to highlight it and I'm going to replace it again just to make sure that everything is working right. Okay, so uh, being in other items can be done as well here, but SEMrush does not connect to them, so we're not going to do them. So that is how to add um, Google Analytics and Google Search Console to a Sierra website and how to start and how to add SEMrush and users to Google um, Search Console as well. To add a user to Google Analytics, you go to admin and then click on the right hand side and under this setting account user management and then hit add and then I will add myself and then for this circumstance I'm going to give myself all of the permissions and then hit add. Um, at any point in time if Lee doesn't like me anymore, he can go in and actually change all of this information without my knowledge because he has the same information that I have. Um, and that's it. That's how to add a user in analytics. That's how to add a user in search console. And that's how to add both of them to Sierra Interactive. And at the same time, this is how to set up a site audit with crawling a Sierra Interactive website.